What's up guys? So I want to talk about the Novell's archetype, the burger deck. And some of you guys might think it's kind of a meme deck. I've already sh shown you guys it beating the cash share, which is arguably one of the stronger decks in the game. So starting right off, let's go ahead and explain what the heck the archetype does and some gameplay to go ahead and back up what I'm saying. So obviously right now we're in a format where most of the time people are just locking out the zones. I've shown you guys basically all you need is one Novell's monster to actually beat the cash share archetype because, uh, well, they attack into you and you just go into other cards and you get to basically tribute your opponent's cards. Uh, with the Bay Griller over here, it lets you tribute your opponent's stuff to get out a Hungry Burger. So even though Hungry Burger is just like a meme, your opponent can't really have out a monster uh, that would actually really do something against you. Because once you get to that point of them having a monster, you just absorb it, you eat it into a burger. Now, if they attack into you, what the heck does the archetype do? So what happens is you tribute your monster and your opponent's monster, and that makes it so you're going to go ahead and bring out a different novels, and you can keep on doing this for multiple turns. That's basically how the archetype wants to play. With the addition of the table here, you're able to recycle some of the cards that you don't want to draw, like Burger, let's be honest, it's not a very good card to draw. But it lets you recycle it by adding either, when you activate it, you get to instantly add a recipe. So it already uh, facilitates the effect of the field spell. And then uh, once per turn, you get to place a ritual monster from your hand on the bottom of the deck, and then you get to draw one card. So basically, it helps out with the bad draws with the deck. And then on top of that, you kind of have a mini pot of avarice effect at the very end. You get to target two cards in your graveyard, including a recipe card. You place them on the bottom of the deck in any order, and then you get to draw one. So uh, the longer that the duel goes on, even though the guys, I guess they're playing like some sort of form where you get, get to draw two. I thought maybe he activated the card where you, you can't use hand traps, but this guy can't really bring out any cards here um, because he's just going to get absorbed. So any archetype that revolves around like one monster, you just absorb it if you're looking looking at like Bujins or even something like Evil Eye. That, those are all of the, of the archetypes where like if they need one monster to equip a bunch of things or Noble Knights, you just eat it before they can actually throw in the equips. Uh, you can see even the Disrespect play by T-Birds build over here. And you don't even need an extra deck with this build so you can play Extravagance, Prosperity. Let me go ahead and show you guys another duel versus a Sword Soul, uh, Tenny. So, uh, like I said, it's a very good archetype and it's relatively consistent because all you need to do is bust out one monster and then you're going to be able to consistently get out all the other ones because they're basically stepping stones uh, for the deck. So again, if there's a problematic card, you'll just absorb it immediately. And what's really good with this is a lot of people don't know how to play against this archetype. You'll see it in this matchup over here. So it goes for a Chi Zhao and a Chen Ying over here. We're going to see the Incantation build. So Incantation, sorry, got to get stopped over here. He's going to activate his effect and he's just like, you know, let's get rid of it. Pre-preparation of Rights activated, which is always a phenomenally good card. So here's one of the uh, cards. It doesn't really matter what Novell. It just has a quick effect where if they're attacking, you tribute it and another um, attack position monster on the field. So basically whatever is trying to eat it. So this is where this guy makes a mistake. You do not want to target any of the novels. This is the biggest thing that a lot of people just don't know how to read up against this deck. And this is why the cash tiers have a bad matchup sometimes when they don't read. So he's activating that card. But what's going to happen is he's going to tribute this card so he gets another monster and he gets to get rid of um, whatever is targeting it because it's just going to go away. So he gets to activate its effect, bring out another novels monster, and now the imperm is stopped and he absorbed the opponent monster uh, by tributing it. That gets to run a lot of mechanic. It's not destroying, it's not banishing. It's better just to tribute it, and there's very few things in Yu-Gi-Oh! other than like Mask or Restrict, right? Like that might be the side deck choice to beat this archetype. But I always thought this archetype was a meme. So he gets to attack it, right? Gets to tribute it, and then, hey, I gotta bring out another monster. So like, it's very difficult to deal with this archetype. It's it's a really weird thing where it's like, oh, well, I'm attacking into you. Okay, well, you lose your monster, I lose my monster. He even gets evenly, doesn't matter. With this card, you guys already know, the Bay Griller is going to uh, absorb your opponent's monster to bring out a burger. And remember, he gets a pot of adverse every turn. So this deck is really good uh, playing up against a deck where maybe they got to go first. And because you could just search for a recipe card over here, with the chef special, you have an instant automatic negate anything. Uh, so this one is when a spell trap or a monster effect is activated, as long as you control a novel's ritual monster, which is part of the deck, uh, you get to negate the activation. And if you control a monster special summoned by a novel's monster's effect, you can destroy that card. So to negate and destroy, more than likely you're going to have that bonus effect, but it is something that you have to meet the conditions. But if you special summon a hungry burger, you get to banish this card from your graveyard to tribute as many monsters your opponent controls as possible. So you can basically get rid of their entire board. So like the, the archetype is 
is no memes. And again, when I first th saw that they were giving Hungry Burger support, I'm like, okay, this is just going to be a joke. No, the deck's really good, and it could be one of the more powerful decks going up into the next format when obviously cash is going to get hit. I mean, let's be honest, that deck is really annoying to face off against, and it's going to be a deck where, again, you don't even need an extra deck over here to uh, play against it, which makes the deck very, very powerful. But I got two builds from here, one from T-Bird and one from uh, the player over here. So, uh, there's also a Choju, which I didn't get to talk about. So this one, let's just add a Ritual Monster and a Ritual Spell. Now, the downside with it is it happens to be a level 6. So to actually open it up with a starter, you can go for other cards to go just, just special summon. Um, they do have the downside of this where you can't special some monsters from the extra deck. But again, remember, this whole deck doesn't need an extra deck. So again, Prosperity, Extravagance can all be played in this deck as well. And then if you just go for a Tribute, I mean, getting double monsters. Now, the downside with this card is obviously, yes, if this gets negated, it kind of hurts, but usually you're bringing out another monster that you don't really need. Or if Hungry Burger lingers on the field, you don't need to keep Hungry Burger. In fact, a lot of times, Hungry Burger is just to facilitate the uh, effect requirement of Bay Gorilla. So I'll give you guys two different deck profiles in case any of you guys do want to go out and build the deck. I'm curious to know which build you think is better. Again, all the small monsters go into another small monster for the most part. Bay Gorilla doesn't go into... Um, another one he's just the one where it tributes your opponent's card then you can bring out a burger <laughs> that's his effect but yeah all the small ones once they're targeted for a uh once they're targeted you get to activate its effects and then you get to bring out a lower one and then you just keep on going for like this is uh what is it one level six uh a novel's ritual monster this one is a five or six and then this one uh goes for a four or five and then this one goes for a four or five and this one's a three or four and then this one is a level uh two or three so they all kind of go down in stepping stones for i guess like the cooking it up but the thing is is that you can't really leave them on the field for too long because if you leave them they're just going to eventually have that effect where they just tribute either everything or if you want to play the grind game, the deck will outpace a lot of different decks because a lot of ritual decks, they have a lot of free cards like pre-prep. That's like a plus one right there. But yeah, I'll mouse over the card just so you guys get the idea of like some of the cards that you may want to play in your deck. I mean, as of right now, the archetype is kind of in its infancy as in like we just got this archetype revealed. If they get any more support, I honestly think this could be one of the top tier decks. Um, and it's funny because I always thought that Hungry Burger would like never see the light of day. It's really weird that they're giving it support, but hey, the more support, the better. Uh, I'd actually recommend that i know this build had three burgers i think two burgers is enough uh, the the one thing with uh bay griller is you cannot special summon it from the graveyard so you need that target so playing two eh, it's okay uh, the reason why is again the field spell facilitates just recycling so it's not the end of the world if you like open up like with you know a hungry burger uh, if you open up three, then yeah, it's kind of bad because you're gonna have to wait three turns to be able to do something and obviously the uh deck um again you technically don't really need to play too many hand traps because it, up against your opponent's board, you just start absorbing things when they attack. And if they activate their effect and it does target, then you just tribute it and you just go into all the small ones. So it goes into everything. So relatively resilient deck. Uh, so it's a good for a grind game and it can be good relatively good going second especially if you're tributing your opponent stuff but that's gonna go ahead and wrap it up for the video if you guys enjoyed it drop a like on it if you're new here hit subscribe turn that bell if you want to see more of the burger meme deck when they get more support because we just got this is the first wave of the uh, support but anyways take care and i'll see you on the next video peace out